are here to kick off the three videos I do every year talking about anticipated releases. And this is our first video for 2024. Yeah, I, I just love doing these. If you watch this channel, you know, I, I love an anticipated release video. I will say for both 2023, okay, can we controversial real talk here? I feel like publishing is in a little bit of a slump. I'm gonna be honest with you. There are things on this list that are exciting, no doubt about it. But some of my tried and true genres, I'm like, where's the beef guys? Like I had to really, I was like going looking for things and I was still not really finding like new things, new authors that I was excited to read from. So, you know, I guess maybe I'm, I'm not selling this video very well. <laughs> because I do have things that I'm excited for, but a lot of them are like, oh, I'm excited for this because I'm already reading this series, or oh, I'm excited for this because I like this author. It's not as much like new stuff. Anyway, you'll see when we get into it. Actually, you know what, with that in mind, should we, do you wanna just like start maybe with things that are series? Okay, here's what we'll do, because I broke these out into genre. What I'm gonna do is before we even get into the genre breakout, let me run through like, hey, these are the ones I'm excited excited about because they're sequels or because they're in like a related series. So we'll do that. And then when we get into the genre breakouts, we'll start with, hey, I'm excited about this because it's an author I like versus not. Is that, I think that makes sense. Okay, let's get into this. So sequels I'm excited about. Everyone on this train is a suspect by Benjamin Stevenson. This is a follow on to everyone in my family has killed someone. It was a very meta mystery book. So I'm excited to see his kind of take on a murder on the Orient Express type trope. I believe this is going to be something that's akin to an isolated close circle mystery. So excited for that sequel. Uh, there are two new in death series releases this year for 2024. Random and Death will come out in January and Passions and Death will come out usually in set. Well, Random and Death is January instead of February. So maybe Passions and Death will be August instead of September. But those are always roughly seven-ish months apart. And then let's see here, other sequels. What Feasts at Night by T. Kingfisher. So this one is a follow on to What Moves the Dead. It is in the Sworn Soldier series that uh, What Moves the Dead was inspired by the fall of the House of Escher. And I believe we're following the main character on a new adventure in this book. And I'm very, very excited for that. An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This is a follow on to A Dowry of Blood. And I loved the writing in A Dowry of Blood. It was sort of a, it was like a Dracula retelling. It wasn't a retelling. It was more of a uh, Dracula inspired. Dracula was a character, but not, I would say, the main focus. So I'm excited to see what the sequel is going to be like. There's going to be a third Amari and the Night Brothers book, allegedly from B.B. Alston. I think that was supposed to come out this year and didn't. So allegedly we're getting number three next year, which is a middle grade fantasy. We're also getting another middle grade fantasy follow-up, which is Silverborn by Jessica Townsend. It is in the Nevermore series. Again, I believe that was supposed to come out this year, but got pushed to next year. Mirrored Heavens by Rebecca Roanhorse finishes out her trilogy. I am obsessed with that first book, Black Sun. Sun, one of my all time favorite books. And I'm really excited to see how this trilogy closes out and where things end up. It's a fantasy series set in sort of like pre Columbian South American inspired world. And it's a lot of like the gods walk amongst us kind of stuff. So excited. There's another in the singing hills cycle from Nevo coming out next year called the brides at high hill. And this is one that uh, is becoming an auto read for me. It's a novella series and each novella is really different and has a different set of characters, all going back though to Cleric Chi. So I'm very excited for that one. Mislaid and Parts Half Known by Shauna McGuire. I believe that this follows on from what we learned um, in the last entry with this sort of like portal place. I don't want to get too much into detail, but I'm, I'm excited to see. I believe that that is 
we're gonna get, that is gonna be a central part of this book. And I don't think I've ever not enjoyed a Wayward Children series entry. Again, because every entry has like a different world and kind of like characters we know, but not the exact same characters, it just really works. And then um, we also have the imposition of Unnecessary Obstacles by Malka Older. That's the other um, kind of like sci-fi fantasy one I wanted to mention in the series. This is a follow-on to, oh god, I forget what the first one was called, but I really enjoyed that first novella. It's sort of mystery, sci-fi, sapphic, like whodunit. Like it's really a mystery, which is fun. So yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to keep going in that series. You will notice I did not include a Murderbot one. And that's because I'm, at least for right now, gonna pause on Murderbot. I realized this year that I'm kind of not sure I need more Murderbot. So I'm gonna take a pause. If I don't remember if there's a new one coming out in 2024, but I'm not gonna read it because there's just not enough variety. I know. I'm, it's blasphemy, but I'm liking these novella series where it's a little bit more mixing things up. So I know I feel weird about that, but it's true. Okay, and then in romance, this is the last one where there's sequels. Primal Mirror by Nalini Singh is the next Side Changeling entry. You guys know I'm obsessed with that series. A Witch's Guide to Magical Innkeeping by Sanju Mandana. This is the follow on to, ooh, which, a witch's guide, what, what, what is it called? Where? Where is it? Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember what that first one's called, but it's the one where there was like magical school and she like comes and is trying to help them, you know, control the little girls because somebody's trying to threaten them in their home. It was very cute and I liked the romance element, so. I will definitely check out the sequel. And then the finale in Martha Waters' long-running sort of historical romantic comedy series, To Woo and To Wed, comes out next year. So I'm sad that we're not getting more in that series, but I'm definitely looking for more from that author because she's the closest read-alike I've found to Tessa Dare. And while Tessa is on her kind of hiatus, the children need something to keep us fed. So those are all of the ones that I'm interested in because they are following to series that I'm I'm reading in. So with that being said, let's get into genre and we'll do these based on ones that are by authors I've read from versus ones I haven't. So One of Us Knows by Alyssa Cole. Well, let's start a mystery thriller. One of Us Knows by Alyssa Cole comes out next year. It kind of doesn't matter what the book is about because I love Alyssa Cole. I really enjoyed um, When No One Is Watching, though I felt like that was a little bit more horror, but I still loved her writing. So I'm really excited to see another kind of thriller-ish book from her. Let's look at the tagline, shall we? A riveting thriller about the new caretaker of a historic estate who finds herself trapped on an island with a murderer and the ghost of her past. Isolated close circle mystery from Alyssa Cole. Okay, now I'm beyond excited. What a thrill. That could not be more for me if it tried. So there's that one, The Bitter End by my friend Alexa Dunn. Now, I may have already read this book. So I may not be able to really like read it or talk about it objectively, but it is her version of an isolated close circle mystery, YA. So let's just, we'll leave it there, but I'm excited for you guys to read that one. Murder Road by Simone St. James. Similarly, I just like Simone St. James, but I seem to recall this might be an isolation trope, which you guys know I love, as you just saw from my reaction to Alyssa Cole. A young couple find themselves haunted by a string of gruesome murders committed along an old desert road in this terrifying new novel. Oh yeah, okay, they take a wrong turn. So this sounds sort of like a take on the old, like, um, urban, like the older urban legends about like a hook guy on a deserted road. So that should be fun. So Mount St. James is such a good writer. Okay, Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. I can't remember the setup for this. It didn't, it sounds like maybe Secrets from the Past and it doesn't sound like a synopsis from him that I would like, but it's his first attempt at writing a male main character. And if you've read his books, you know that sometimes his female main characters are interesting. So I'm kind of curious about this one. I may, I'm not gonna auto buy that one, but I'm gonna wait for some reviews because I think that is intriguing. Uh, no One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall. This one is that this woman has never told her husband anything about her past, but then like a confluence of events in terms of like job losses and she's pregnant and all this, They she does co-own her parents' house with her sisters. And so they're gonna go live there. And he finds out that everybody 
I think she killed her parents. And we're gonna find out whether or not, like what really happened. So this is another one where I'm not totally sure if I'll I'll pick it up or not, but based on the reviews, I might, I might pick that one up. And then, okay, The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins. Maybe after reading The Villa recently, I'm kind of thinking maybe not, but I do like a lot of what Rachel Hawkins does. So I'm curious, the tagline on this one is, like the victim of famous kidnapping as a child and a widow four times over, Ruby ruled the tiny town of Tav Tavistock from Ashby House, her family's estate high in the Blue Ridge Mountains. In the aftermath of her death, that estate, along with a nine-figure fortune and the complicated legacy of being a, a McTavish, passed to her adopted son, Camden. So then, like, his, but he doesn't really want it anymore, but then his uncle dies, so he has to come back to the house. It sounds like sort of like secrets from the past, like family inheritance, remote house. So all of that sounds intriguing to me. So I may, depending on the reviews, again, I'm, I may pick that one up. The Mystery Writer by Sulari Gentle. This sounds like somewhere between after she wrote him and, oh God, what was the one I liked so much? The Woman in the Library. It's this woman who is a writer, but she has like writer's block. She goes to live with her brother. Things are not working very well, but then her mentor dies. Everybody thinks that her brother did it. So she's trying to prove that he didn't. But I I really like what I like the way Sulari Gentle approaches mystery. It's always a little bit meta. So I'm intrigued and I'm, I'm gonna read that one. I'm gonna read that one. So those are ones from authors I already have read from. Then I had a couple of new ones that came onto my radar, mostly because of their tropes. So one is The Night of the Storm by Nishida Para. And one of you guys actually tagged me in this and I was like, oh yeah, that definitely sounds like a me book. I love it when you guys find these in the wild and you tag me. If I, like, I'm terrible about checking my mentions and DMs, but if I do and I see it, I get excited. Ooh, it has a very low rating though before its release. But the synopsis is still exciting. From debut author Nishida Parekh, a fresh take on the classic locked room thriller about a multi-generational Indian American family marooned in a house with a murderer during Hurricane Harvey. That is a me synopsis for sure. So I kind of think that I'm going to end up reading that because that sounds so intriguing. And then the anti Hunter's Guide to Murder by C.L. Miller. This sounded a little twee, like a little cutesy, but it does sound like an actual mystery. I have an advanced copy of this that I need to read. Um, so it just, but it sounded, it sounded fun. In this irresistible and thrilling debut novel, a former antique hunter investigates a suspicious death at an isolated English manor embroiling her back in the dangerous world of stolen, of tra tracking stolen artifacts. What antique would you kill for? So I just think that sounds like fun in my kind of book. So I kind of couldn't resist. And She Left by Stacey Gray. I believe that they're isolated close circle mystery if I'm remembering rightly. But the premise is, is that it's this, um, so I believe that there was like a house party where everybody ended up being murdered except for one person and she is the one who left, hence she left. And uh, she's been like lured back to this isolated setting and somebody's going to try to get revenge or try to finish the job or whatever. I thought that sounded fun. It's from um, Poison Pen Press and I think they do a good job of um, finding actual A, actual mysteries and B, you know, things that are meta or kind of different and fun. And then the last one in this category, yeah, I think this is the last one on my list, is um, How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin. And th this, uh, the comp since the tagline on this sold me. For fans of Knives Out and the Thursday Murder Club, an enormously fun mystery about a woman who spends her entire life trying to prevent her foretold murder only to be proven right 60 years later when she is found dead in her sprawling country estate. State. Now it's up to her great niece to catch the killer. So I thought that sounded really just like my kind of book. Okay, so that was a lot of um, mystery thriller, which is not surprising because, you know, I read a lot of that. Let's move on to horror. So let's see here. First is The Night Guest by Holder Nutztudir. This is from the Tor Horror imprint. What do they call that one? I always forget. Um, but I have pretty good success with them. Nightfire, that's what it's called. Tor in general, I have pretty good success with their new releases. They, between their horror and fantasy sci-fi stuff, I mean, they honestly probably 
probably are most them and maybe Berkeley are my kind of two most consistent ones at this point. But anyway, let's see here. It's an eerie and ensnaring story set in contemporary Reykjavik that's sure to keep you awake at night. Idun is at another doctor's office. She knows her constant fatigue is a sign. Something's not right, but practitioners have dismissed her symptoms and blood tests because they haven't revealed any cause. She keeps getting all these advice until one night she falls asleep with the watch on and wakes up to find she's walked over 40,000 steps in the night. What is happening when she's asleep? Why is she waking up with increasingly disturbing injuries and why won't anyone believe her? So I just thought that, sorry, I had to change the battery and I messed up the camera angle. Anyway, I just thought that was a, I like that it's a different setting than I normally get to read from. And then um, I like that it sounds like the kind of metaphor is around like not being believed in a medical context because that hits uh, upsettingly close to home for me and I'm sure for many other people. The next one on my list is The House That Horror Built by Christina Henry. This is another spooky old house one. I love a spooky old house, guys. A single mother working in the gothic mansion of a reclusive horror director stumbles upon terrifying secrets in the captivating new horror novel from the best-selling author of Good Girls Don't Die and Horsemen. So the, she's basically like the housekeeper. She starts to hear noises from behind a locked door, noises that sound remarkably like a human voice calling for help, even though Javier lives alone and never has visitors. So what's she going to do? We'll find out. But I thought that one sounded like my kind of book. There's one from Aaron E. Adams coming out called One of You. Jackal, I would describe as mostly a thriller, but it did end up having kind of a horror twist. So it's kind of one of those ones that's on the line. And then when I read the synopsis, it sounded more horror than thriller to me. So it says a mysterious outsider torments two Haitian American sisters, forcing them to confront dark secrets from their family's past in this powerful psychological suspense. Expense. What would you sacrifice to become American? Um, they're immigrants. Let's see here. Beneath the polished exterior, something is slightly off. There's this malice waiting, wait, wanting to reveal itself. When their mother unexpectedly dies, they are overwhelmed by the mob of relatives, friends, and church ladies. Amidst taking care of the funeral, they meet Libate, who, who claims to be a close friend of their mother's, but their mother never mentioned this woman. And then after a series of events, a disfigured doll appearing in their attic etc. They're forced to dive into the hidden world of mythos and questions Liebe Bates' role in it. So I just, that sounded more horror than thriller to me, but I was still intrigued by the synopsis. And um, I really liked the writing in The Jackal, even if I didn't love the way the, po the plot ended up progressing. I was really into the writing, so I definitely would like to try more from her. The next one is called How to Make a Horror Movie and Survive by Craig DeLuey, who I've never read from before, but I believe he's got a pretty good backlist. Uh, yeah, from Bram Stoker Award nominated author. It's a darkly humorous horror novel. That's a buzzword for me because I do tend to like the sort of like horror comedy-ish take of someone like a Grady Hendrix. So that was a buzzword to me. Sees a famous 80s slasher director set out to shoot the most terrifying horror movie movie ever made using an occult camera that might be and probably is demonic. That sounded very like what Grady Hendrix d does and that tends to be a tone that really works for me in horror. So I was intrigued by that. The Gathering by C.L. Tudor. So um, C.L. Tudor is another one of those authors who kind of rides the line of thriller and horror. And this one, I believe I put on this side, I put on the horror list because I, I felt like the description sounded more horror. And so did the, the cover looked kind of horror to me. A small Alaskan town, a missing boy, a brutal murder, a detective brought in from out of state to assist the former sheriff who investigated a similar murder 25 years ago. But are they hunting a twisted psychopath or something even more terrifying? And I'm thinking, with this cover, well, actually, you guys are seeing it on the screen, with that cover, plus the like, is it something more terrifying? And thinking about um, The Drift, which was her last book, I'm getting more like mystery horror. And I will say, guys, mystery horror is a real sweet spot for me. I, I, I've I enjoyed what I've read in that kind of area, and I would like more, especially if I know going into, I think that's more it. If I know going into 
into it, it's kind of mystery and kind of horror. I really like it. If it's a surprise, I sometimes like my expectations aren't set correctly, but it's a vibe that I'm into. So I'm, I'm excited to give that one a go from her. And I also, even if it ends up being more mystery, I really like an isolated community, you know, serial killer kind of book. So I think there's no, no downsides here. And then the last one in horror that I marked was uh, Immortal Pleasures by V. Castro. Uh, and this, the tagline is, an ancient Aztec vampire roams the modern world in search of vengeance and love in this seductive dark fantasy. Doesn't that sound like something I definitely need to read? Yes, it does. Also, the cover is giving what it should be giving, I think. Okay, so that is horror. And then moving into sci-fi fantasy, I only have four books that are not continuations in series. And all of them are just because I like the author. Like it doesn't, it kind of doesn't matter what the synopsis is, even though the synopsis on all of these sound good. So first of all, The Dead Cat Tail Assassins by P. Jelly Clark. I think if I like this book, officially call, call P. Jelly Clark an all-time favorite author because he has, he writes a lot. He writes in several different genres and he's had two worlds he built that like I really love. I don't know. Maybe he needs to write a little bit more for me, but he's definitely one of those ones on the come up in terms of all time faves. The dead cat tail assassins are not cats, nor do they have tails, but they are most assuredly dead. <laughs> Okay, I love that as a tagline. A brand new world and a fantastical city full of gods and assassins. Yes, there's a guild. There's a guild of assassins. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, this sounds great. Can't wait. Whatever Peter, pretty much anything Peter Jelly Clark wants to give us, I'm gonna at least check it out. Then the last murder at the end of the world. This is a like sci-fi dystopian mystery-ish. And I really like sci-fi mystery whenever I can find them. I actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I had picked a different book for Blades and Bob's Ripper Book Club. This might be our the pick for me this year because we're doing 2020 forward. So like sci-fi themed genre mashups. So this seems like a sci-fi murder combo. Okay, the last murder at the end of the world. Solve the murder to save what's left of the world. Outside the island, there is the world destroyed by a fog that swept the planet, killing anyone that touched it. On the island, it is idyllic. 122... 122 villagers and three scientists living in peaceful harmony. The villagers are content to fish, farm, and feast to obey their nightly curfew and to do what they're told by the scientists. Until to the horror of the islanders, one of their beloved scientists is found brutally stabbed to death and they learn the murder has triggered a lowering of the security system around the island, the only thing that was keeping the fog at bay. Dun dun dun! So yeah, if the murder isn't solved within 92 hours, the fog will smother the island and everyone on it. Yeah, I think that one sounds like fun. And and then we have another T. Kingfisher on the list. This is her like fantasy entrance, entrance, entrance? Entry. There you go. This is her fantasy entry for the year. It's called A Sorceress Comes to Call. The cover is, as per usual, Gorge. And I will read pretty much anything T. Kingfisher puts out. So, a dark retelling of the Brothers Grimm's Goose Girl, rife with secrets, murder, and forbidden magic. So, T. Kingfisher does a lot of fairy tale retellings, and for me, they really work. They have the right balance of, like, kind of dark with humor and sometimes like a romantic element. It's just, it works for me. Yeah, so I'm into this. Cordelia knows her mother is unusual. Their house doesn't have any doors between rooms. There are no secrets in the house and her mother doesn't allow Cordelia to have a single friend. Uh, unless you count Falada, her mother's beautiful white horse. More than simple eccentricity sets her mother apart. Other mothers don't force their daughters to be silent and motionless for hours, sometimes days on end. Other mothers aren't sorcerers. Um, let's see they leave in the they have to leave in the middle of the night and they r arrive at a remote country manor of a wealthy older man the squire and his unwed sister Hester yeah okay so this seems this seems like it's a metaphor for maybe like child abuse or domestic violence anyway I'm interested to read it because like I said T. Kingfisher and then Song of the Huntress is by Lucy Holland who wrote Sister Song um a couple years ago and I thought that that was a really beautiful myth retelling and I I really liked the writing in it quite a bit. And so I was interested to see that there's another myth retelling. She's also doing um, like ancient British 
or like Celtic mythology, which I think is an interesting take. So a must read for fans of Circe, Song of the Huntress recasts the folklore behind the wild hunt into a dark feminist fantasy set amid the legends and beauty of ancient Brit. Yeah, I, I really like the way she kind of worked with this source material, type of source material in Sister Song, so I would like to see it done for Song of the Huntress. Okay, only two romances besides the one I've already mentioned that I'm gonna call out. One is Bride by Allie Hazelwood, which is her first attempt at a paranormal romance. And I have to say, I think that this makes so much sense for the way that she writes. I think that this will be, I think I'm gonna love this. It's, I believe, a vampire story. I am very excited about it. The other one I wanted to call it was The Truth According to Ember by Danica Nava. I believe it's a fake dating story. No, okay, it's, the reason I wanted to highlight it, it highlight it is because it's the first rom-com by an indigenous author published by a major publisher. So I think that's exciting. I believe that Ember kind of gets a job by kind of like not presenting her Chickasaw heritage because she keeps like not being able to find a job when that is on there. Gets this job and then starts dating this guy who is also native, but he doesn't know she's native. And so like, I think that this is, you know, her trying to like manage that relationship. Someone is blackmailing her because they know about like how she got the job and things kind of spiral, spiral, spiral from there. But anyway, I just thought it's kind of wild that we haven't had one of these before. This is the first one. So I wanted to put that on your radar in case these are tropes that you like in a romantic comedy. Okay. And then last but not least, I have a couple of nonfiction ones that are on my list. One is How to Be Heard by Roxanne Gay. This has been pushed several times. So I don't know if it'll actually come out in 2024, but it's her book about writing. I then had The Exvangelicals, Loving, Living, and Leaving the White Evangelical Church by Sarah McCammon. Sounded like relatable content for me, so that is on my radar. I survived capitalism and all I got was this lousy t-shirt, Everything I Wish I Never Had to Learn About Money by Madeline Pendleton. I am interested in this because I follow her on TikTok and she runs a, I believe it's a co-op. I forget exactly the ownership structure, but even though she's technically like the founder and owner of the company, like all the employees make the same amount of money and like, do profit sharing. So I just, I was interested to hear her take on how that works. And then finally, A Travel Guide to the Middle Ages, The World Through Medieval Eyes by Anthony Bale. That just sounded interesting to me because I think it's essentially talking about like what the world looked like, like what the world would have looked like to somebody going to, I don't know, like Venice in 1300, like describing how things have changed. I don't know, that sounded interesting to me. I really love medieval history. Okay guys, I'm wiped, it's lunchtime. Those are all of my, my anticipated 2024 releases as things stand right now. Definitely let me know if you think there are ones that should be on my radar that were not on this list, but those are the ones that I have my eye on as of right now. So. Let me know what you thought below in the comments. And if you liked this video or found it helpful, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social means if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that, that will do it. I also have all of the books listed in that description box. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon.